And now, by popular demand, we have Chandelure. This ghostly chandelier first scared trainers in the fifth generation as they attempted to make their way through Unova's Elite Four, as Chandelure was the strongest member of Chantal's team. In classic ghost-type fashion, Chandelure manages to conjure up some morbid imagery. Its flames don't physically burn its opponents, but rather their spirits, which it then absorbs for itself. Because of course, what's Pokemon without a little dose of the macabre? On a brighter note, Chandelure also had a starring role on the popular sitcom Friends as the sarcastic member of the group from 1994 to 2004. Today, we'll examine how Chandelure fared in the competitive scene, with its occult blazes and wisecracks alike. So, how good was Chandelure actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. On day one of its debut generation, Chandelure was instantly the most feared Pokemon around because its hidden ability from the dream world was none other than the ridiculously fearsome Shadow Tag. An ability so potent that it put Why Not in Ubers. Now just imagine what it could do on a Pokemon with a special attack stat rivaling Kyogre's. Most players demanded Shadow Tag Chandelure ban as soon as it was released. Scarf sets trapped and revenge killed just about everything, and it wasn't reasonable to force everything to run Shed Shell, or to force every defensive Pokemon to run an anti-Chandelure move, just so Chandelure couldn't get a substitute and six Calm Minds on them. This level of trapping was seen as uncompetitive. At the time, the Dream World metagame wasn't official, but had a decent amount of players on its ladder, and Chandelure was at the top of it. It was so good that it even dominated Dream World Ubers. The mighty Lugia being forced to run Shed Shell was a testament to its impact on the metagame. However, throughout the entire generation, Shadow Tag Chandelure was never actually released. Without it, Chandelure was not a bad Pokemon, but it certainly had a tough time in OU, what with being slower than just about every offensive Pokemon and being weak to all the earthquakes on sand teams and water moves on rain teams. Resistance-wise, its fire immunity it had from Flash Fire didn't do much against sun teams because those packed Dugtrio, and its fighting immunity meant Zilch because all the fighting types destroyed it anyway. Some players saw success with a set of Substitute, Shadow Ball, Fire Blast, and Hidden power fighting, which scared out Ferrothorn and Skarmory and safely smacked Tyranitar, but overall Chandelure just couldn't keep up with the metagame. It was too slow and got hit hard from every angle. So to Yu Yu it went. As odd as it may have seemed to have a Pokemon with such a high special attack stat in the tier, Chandelure fit in just fine, at least at first. Its fighting immunity was incredibly useful given how dominant fighting types such as Mian Shao were, and it resisted Heracross's secondary stab in Megahorn to boot. Its fire immunity was also also amazing in thwarting the otherwise nuclear Victini's V-Create. These useful resistances and immunities in conjunction with its solid speed tier, getting the jump on offensive staples like Needle Queen, meant Chandelure got plenty of opportunity to fire off its attacks. Pun intended. Having a secondary stab meant that even the waters that resisted Fire Blast weren't safe, as Chandelure could spam Shadow Ball to hit them, as well as Rhyperior incredibly hard. And in a one-on-one, -on -one, it could even up the ante with an Energy Ball that completely blew Rhyperior and Swampert away. And even with the exception of Empoleon, Empoleon may have resisted Shadow Ball, but since it was half steel, it meant it didn't resist Fire Blast to begin with, and even Sharpedo, who technically resisted both moves, was so frail that it didn't actually count. Chandelure was impossible to safely wall, outside of Snorlax and Porygon too. Luckily, Snorlax was one of the best Pokemon in the tier, so this wasn't much of a problem. That is, until Chandelure began using a bulkier set with Will-O-Wisp, Taunt, and sometimes even Pain Split or Substitute, which absolutely ruined both Lax and Porygon too, and was essentially impossible to answer safely with other Pokemon like Rhyperior or Bulky Water. This put Chandelure over the line in many players' eyes. It was already immensely difficult to answer even in spite of its Stealth Rock weakness, and this was just too much. So at the very end of the generation, Chandelure was banned from UU, considered too good for it, but not yet quite OU status, resulting in its placement to BL. Chandelure's typing is a doubles edged sword in VGC. Ah, see what I did there? On the one hand, it's weak to almost every relevant spread move, including Earthquake, Rock Slide, and Surf. But on the other hand, Chandelure has functional triple immunities to fire, normal, and fighting, letting it sometimes get free switches in. Although 2011 was so lacking in fire types other than Chandelure that it would sometimes run Flame Body, another great ability that could swing entire games with a bit of luck. Chandelure's typing also brought powerful boons in their own rights. On the fire side, 
Chandelure brings the strongest heat waves in the game to the field, threatening massive damage to the enemy side if they can't handle it. Despite its mediocre bulk, Chandelure was able to find switches somewhat easily due to its functional three immunities. And just like in singles, Choice Scarf could patch up Chandelure's spread issues, making it an offensive powerhouse capable of creating inescapable pins. However, it's Chandelure's ghost typing that really defines it. Chandelure was an especially awkward speed tier of base 80, but if spec to be minimum speed, it is both an excellent user and abuser of Trick Room and doubles, as it's able to phase through opposing fakeouts to twist the dimensions and then fire off the most powerful heat waves known to man. In these cases, Chandelure would often be paired with Hitmontop and carry a Focus Sash, relying on fakeout support and its one-time survival item to ensure Trick Room would go off. Hitmontop or other fighting types such as Hariyama also dealt with the Dark and Rock types Chandelure hated, especially the dreaded Tyranitar. This setter variant liked to support other middling or low-speed Pokemon, with good offensive presence, such as Conkeldur and especially Scrafty. Of course, Chandelure also appreciated support of its own, because it was so susceptible to being shattered. Amoongus was a great redirector with Rage Powder that could ward off Wayward Samurott Aqua Jets, and also attracted the rare fire moves that Chandelure could take advantage of. However, Chandelure's ghost typing isn't just useful when setting up Trick Room. It's also paramount when attempting to stop the speeds from getting swapped. Chandelure's ability to dodge fake out goes both ways, letting it ignore the Hitmontops or other fake out users on the other side of the field. And that awkward base 80 speed meant that against hard Trick Room, Chandelure could still outspeed the opposing sweepers. So who's awkward now, huh? Since Trick Room setters commonly are ghost types just like Chandelure, it's able to abuse ghost self weakness and the highest special attack in the format to evaporate whatever spirit might be trying to set up Trick Room on the other side, be it Dusclops opposing Chandelure or Jellicent. Even if the opponent wasn't using a ghost type, other Trick Room setters, like Reuniclus, were usually still weak to ghosts. Since those mons would be trying to set up Trick Room, you could pretty much count on them being slower than Chandelure itself if it had any speed investment, leaving them facing down a hugely powerful Shadow Ball. However, not even Chandelure could break through the menace that is Eviolite -like Light Dusclops or a bulky Jellicent without a little help. As such, many Chandelure would run Ghost Gem, giving their Shadow Ball a little bit of extra oomph to eliminate whatever setter was on the other side. Even then, it wasn't always possible to dispose of Dusclops reliably, but Chandelure had one more trick up its sleeve, Imprison. Imprison Ghost Gem Chandelure may be focused on one thing, but boy does it do it well. With both offensive and supportive threats to stop Trick Room, Chandelure was easily the best anti-Trick Room mon in the game. While there were plenty of Choice Scarf Chandelures in 2011, looking to mostly utilize its firepower, it was actually in its capacity as Trick Room's biggest foe that it prospered most. Jonathan Hiller used Focus Sash Imprison Chandelure to win the Newark Regionals in the Senior Division, also opting to swap out Heat Wave for Overheat to ensure it could do as much damage as possible. Aaron's Cybertron Zhang also used a Focus Sash build to win the US Nationals in the Seniors Division, pairing it with Jellicent as another Trick Room mon turned anti-Trick Room. Chandelure even had success on the world stage, where Matt and Fuego Coil used it alongside his Rogue Samurai pick to place third place. Matt opted to run the Ghost Gem variant to blow away opposing Trick Room, a fact Wolf Glick recounts as having sent his Kofagrigus back to the underworld. Chandelure's popularity as a Trick Room counter continued in 2012, with several players using it when they needed to defeat slower teams, including Tony Chinese Dude Cheung. It also was a strong counter to the Rash of Sun teams that became available with the shift to national decks and the emergence of Ninetales, although it was nearly useless against rain teams, aside from possibly blowing back enemy scissors. However, Chandelure ended up prospering most in a weather you wouldn't normally associate with it, Hail. 2012 saw the emergence of the Hail Room archetype, which used Blizzard spam from the likes of Obama Snow and Gastrodon to overwhelm the opponent once Trick Room was set up. Chandelure, despite its lack of synergy with Hail itself, was a powerful pick in these teams for its ability to bait out and punish opposing fire and fighting type Pokemon, who would prey on the ice types and Amoongus's redirection that formed the backbone of the Hail archetype. In addition, Gastrodon's Storm Drain kept Chandelure safe from getting its flames snuffed out. This team was popular among Japanese players online, as well as in several other tournaments in the West, where it was popularized by players such as Cassie, Huey Ha, and Matthias Dreykov Gower. Cassie managed to make top 64 at nationals, while Dreykov placed first in Europe in the online VGCS Winter Battle. Dreykov in particular fell in love with Chandelure, and while he more frequently used Jellicent for slow matchups, Chandelure's ability to completely nullify and use opponent's attacks against them could make for some especially quick victories. 
Chandelure on this build typically carried a focus sash to ensure its survival, which might seem at odds with hail, but mostly required intelligent play and could be managed by running Chandelure in the front and Abomasnow in the back. Bjorn Igonhof Visers also ran a non-trick room variant of Abomasnow Chandelure to make top 16 at the world's last chance qualifier, with his Chandelure carrying a fire gem for maximum power. 2012 also saw Rushan Firestorm Khan debut his Slow King based Chandelure trick room team, which used a focus sash to guarantee trick room setup and acted as a check to grass types that threatened slow king and gastrodon rushan also made top 16 at the world's lcq and he'd use this same build in future years so stay tuned however chandelure's greatest successes in 2012 were actually flipped as opposed to 2011. it was with choice scarf that it had its best results adam dawes doricott who you might know these days as a commentator made a tour of european nationals and even top cut u.s nationals with a choice scarf chandelure packing overheat he Heat Wave, Shadow Ball, and Energy Ball alongside Swampert, Terrakion, Viridian, Cresselia, and Sableye. But it was Wolf Glick who put up the Chandelier Pokemon's best result at Nationals, where he defended his title with a Scarf Chandelure paired with his innovative Swords Dance Steel Gem Scizor, which both he and Aaron Cybertron Zhang used to shake up the metagame. Wolf wasn't the only one who saw Chandelure's synergy with Scizor. En Fuego used Chandelure to repeat his top 8 performance at Worlds from 2011, making the inspired choice to bring Chandelure on a rain team. I know I said Chandelure was useless against rain, but on rain, it can remove many of rain's best answers, such as Ferrothorn and Amoongus. With both Scizor and Chandelure, Enfuego had two of the best Cresselia counters in the game, and as the only team without Cresselia on his own in top 8, that was quite valuable, especially since many players made the call to bring Hidden Power Fire Cresselia to Worlds as a tech to handle Scizor. Chandelure put up good spread of results in 2013 as well, with many different players showcasing the variety and sets that it could bring to the table. Igonho and Dreykov continued to use their Hail Room team to good success, with Igonho adapting his team to utilize Trick Room for the March International and Dreykov making top 8 in the Nugget Bridge circuit before actually falling to Baz Anderson's opposing Ghost Gem Chandelure. Hail Room also saw a new convert in the form of Araluen 7, who used the build to achieve top 8 at the Athens Regionals. Meanwhile, Ben Gold used Chandelure and Abomasnow as well, but instead of setting up Trick Room, he was the devoted to stopping it, as he used Trick Room and Prison Chandelure along with a Scarf Abomasnow to flip the script, and not flip the speed. This setup paid off, netting top 8 at the Birmingham Nationals alongside his unexpected Blizzard Needle Queen. Chandelure saw plenty of good placements in other nationals around the world, as Rena Purdy and Jens D put together a pair of top 16 finishes in Bohum, with Jens using Hail Room and Rena using a team that baited fire type attacks with Bisharp and Virizion. Using Fire Weak Pokemon to support Chandelure continued to bring its success. Marcus Raj and Hugh Ronzani used Chandelure to place 10th and 2nd respectively at the Australia Nationals with Marcus using Ferrothorn and Hugh using Scizor. Kevin Fisher also paired Chandelure with Scizor at US Nationals using a Choice Scarf version carrying the unexpected Hidden Power Rock to eliminate enemy Volcaronos that might wall it and punching walls open for Source Dance Steel Gem Scizor to do its thing. However, 2013 Chandelure couldn't keep up its strings of reliable world's top 8 appearances. Although Rena and Hugh both brought the same teams that they had top cut their nationals with, neither was able to make it to top 8, as they placed 35th and 46th. Even with that slightly disappointing end to the season, however, Chandelure and his trainers could stand proud for giving it a good showing throughout the season, and honestly, throughout all of Gen 5. Chandelure was completely passed over for OU in Generation 6, and it settled into UU again. This time around, it wasn't as dominant. High Dragon was the best Pokemon in the tier, and it had the resistances, bulk, and longevity with Roost to give Chandelure a seriously hard time. Mega Aerodactyl was another thorn in its side, as it outsped even Choice Scarf Chandelure and trapped it with a Tough Claws boosted Pursuit. In addition to not being able to hit the Hydra on nearly every offensive team and getting picked off by the Mega Aerodactyl back backing it up, Chandelure also had a tougher time getting used out of its resistances and being able to switch in to begin with. That said, it was still a fine Pokemon with some seriously good traits. While it wasn't great against offense, it hardwalled the most common variants of Infernape, one of the tier's most dangerous Pokemon. Chandelure's main use was absolutely throttling stall teams. With its seismic toss immunity, it could easily get a substitute up on Blissey and Combine, proceeding to absolutely crush just about everything else. The mighty Alomomola was set up fodder 
better as well. Stahl was so helpless that they often relied on Mega Steelix being at full health so it could live a hit with Sturdy and roar Chandelure out since the sub protected it from Earthquake. However, this wouldn't be enough as Chandelure would just come in again and repeat the process. Substitute also had use against offense as it forced Scarf variants of High Dragon to reveal what move they would lock themselves into, which Chandelure's teammates could then take advantage of. However, Chandelure was mostly known in the UU metagame as the Stall Killer. It could even run a choice spec set to great effect. While it no longer had the potential to completely sweep Stall, it would still ruin Blissey with Trick. The main reason to use it was because it went from being annoyed by the occasional Umbreon to blowing it up as it switched in. Or if there wasn't something else Chandelure would need to trick its specs to, just tricking it. Plus, it was still useful against offense, as even High Dragon didn't want to take too many attacks from it. Overall, Chandelure's role in Gen 6 UU wasn't quite what it had been in the generation prior, but it still had an incredibly important niche in the metagame, given how powerful Stall was. Now for Gen 6 VGC, the introduction of fairy types in Gen 6 finally provided room for fire types to have their moment in the sun, even when it wasn't literally in the sun. While steel might be the first type you think of when you think of how to beat fairies, the most common fairy types like Mawile and Azumarill are neutral to steel type moves. And while Azumarill still threatens fire types, Mawile doesn't like seeing them, and so fire types entered the meta in spades. Chandelure is a Pokemon that both functions well as a fire type and loves going up against other fire types due to Flash Fire. Flash Fire was so valuable that it mostly overshadowed Chandelure's nevertheless excellent new ability, Infiltrator, which it could still potentially run to straight up beat Substitute Aegislash. Chandelure did have new things to fear though, most prominently the prevalence of Sucker Punch due to Mega Kangaskhan and Mega Mawile. However, it was also frequently used alongside Mega Mawile. Remember, anytime Chandelure might be good because of its fire type coverage, it's also good because of how it can bait and punish that coverage. The loss of Ghost Gem also also hurt in its pure anti-trick room matchup. Right off the bat, Chandelure started putting up good results. Derek Gazis and Nicholas Peckman both made top 8 at the Virginia Regionals, with Derek running a Specs variant of Chandelure that was able to dispose of Megas more easily. Over in St. Louis, Matt Carter gave Focus Sash Chandelure a regional win by pairing it with an old pal in Choice Scarf Obama Snow. Chandelure popped up all over Winter Regionals, including Mike Omega Donut Suleski's 8th place finish at Long Beach and his 3rd place in Orlando, where Chandelure also placed second at the hands of Steven Scruggs and 11th with Allison Fishy McDonald, who also used Obama Snow. Before Spring Regionals, Evil Wolf demonstrated a unique anti-meta Chandelure to win the Singapore Asia Cup qualifiers. Focus Sash wasn't a reliable safety net for Trick Room anymore for a few reasons. Kangaskhan could hit Chandelure with Fake Out due to Scrappy, and its double hit meant it could break through Chandelure if it hit. In addition, Sucker Punch could ruin Chandelure's day once Trick Room went up, both from Kangaskhan and Mawile. Evil Wolf thus opted for Colba Berry on Chandelure to protect it from Sucker Punch, which also let it KO Mega Mawile in return. In addition, Evil Wolf was to forego Shadow Ball for Energy Ball, which allowed him to two-hit KO Rotom Wash in exchange for losing coverage on Gardevoir and Gengar, two Pokemon he didn't care much about. Once Spring Regionals rolled around, Chandelure was a common sight once again. In Seattle, Ben Demian placed top 8 using a Hail Room team, while Emilio Orozco made top 16, and Matt Cruz placed 13th, using a Sash Variant with no Trick Room, specifically packing Overheat to handle Aegislash. Rounding out Chandelure's appearances were Kyle Smith's 5th place in Athens, Georgia, Ben Hickey's 2nd in Salt Lake City with Choice Specs Chandelure, and a pair of great performances from Colin the Battle Room Hare, who placed 3rd in Overland Park, and Juan Madison with his substitute Chandelure. Chandelure additionally enjoyed quite a bit of international success, as Steven Appelfeller placed 7th at the German National Championships, and Ash Bakar managed to win the Brisbane Regionals with a Hail room variant that put all the focus on Obama Snow by Mega evolving it. Ash later changed the team to focus on Mega Kangaskhan and placed 5th at Australian Nationals, and in other oceanic performances, a player known as Alexander made bronze on the podium with Trick Room Chandelure. In Mexico, Hector Lanzano made top 8 at the Monterey Premier Challenge using the same Culber Berry Energy Ball Trick Room variant Evil Wolf had developed. Chandelure also enjoyed usage in Japan and Mexico, and as you can tell, that widespread usage actually meant it was one of the most 
used Pokemon in the format, hovering right around top 10 for most of the year. Chandelure saw 13% usage at US Nationals, including some interesting sets from Nicholas Saman, who slapped the safety goggles on to handle the ever-annoying Amoongus, and eventually third-placer Logan Castro, who gave Chandelure a safeguard to protect his Mega Kangaskhan and Bisharp. Senior division player Tyler Christian, who had placed 5th in Athens, also brought back his Chandelure team to place 19th at Nationals, using an infiltrator variant of Chandelure that he paired with the unique choice of Lantern. However, Chandelure's usage fell steeply before Worlds, as usage of Garchomp, Rotom Heat, Tyranitar, and Aerodactyl rose. It still had a few scattered results, including Johannes Botma's second place at South Africa Nationals, but the only usage of Chandelure at Worlds was by John Hu, who placed 50th. At least 5th place senior player Gilbert made good use of Chandelure, pairing it with none other than Mega Obama Snow and using a unique defensive safety goggles variant that emphasized Chandelure's good immunities and resistances, especially when paired with Scrafty. After Worlds, Chandelure also had two good showings. At the San Jose Regionals, where Daniel Cardenas took it to 5th, and in Philadelphia, where Jeremy Rodriguez placed 16th, using a unique pledge-based team that would set up the speed-lowering Swamp. In Jeremy's own words, he picked Chandelure because he searched which Pokemon had the highest special attack stat to exploit the lower speed, and what do you know, Chandelure popped up. In keeping with that mandate of firepower overall, Jeremy used a Specs Infiltrator Chandelure with Hidden Power Ice for maximum coverage. 2015's expansion to the National decks was not kind to Chandelure, as its old enemy Heatran came back to the fore, as did the ever-present problem of Lander's Therian, whose rock slides were guaranteed trouble. One of its only silver linings was a new Fire Week Pokemon it could use to switch in, in the form of Mega Venusaur. Nevertheless, it still saw some use. Andrew Hovis paired it with Old Reliable Scizor to place 12th at the Missouri Winter Regionals, and Car Concepcion used the double Fire Week Mega Core of Mawile and Venusaur to win Virginia. Meanwhile, Firestorm revived his Slow King Trick Room team from 2012. His original team had featured Kangaskhan anyway, so why not toss on Mega Kangaskhan? In Florida, Matt Vibbert used the slow sibling of Mega Slowbro to place 10th, also using Whimsicott and Jumpluck. Other results included Nicholas Vela's 5th at Melbourne Regionals and Car Concepcion's 8th place in Georgia, where Jerry Woods III joined him as the only other player in 2015 to win a regional with Chandelure by also pairing it with the same Mawile Venusaur core. Finally, Javier Valdez took 2nd at the Chile Nationals using a Politoed Rain team with Gothitelle trapping. But other than that, Chandelure fizzled out as the metagame slowly moved towards the dominance of Chalk, and Chandelure found itself unable to compete with all of the heat rans around, and its only placement at Worlds was outside of Day 2. The unrestricted meta of 2016 is not a hospitable environment for Chandelure by any means. Nevertheless, one fearless player, Samuel Harzma, managed to give Chandelure a top 8 at Fort Wayne Regionals, alongside a truly innovative team of Mewtwo, Groudon, Breloom, and Walrein. Samuel used an entirely original Chandelure with the goal of setting Trick Room and beating common setters such as Cresselia and Bronzong, keeping the turn order how he wanted it. What made it original? Well, first of all, it was Shookerberry to handle opposing Groudons, while Samuel's own Groudon would neutralize opposing Kyogre. Secondly, it was Flame Body. Samuel knew most players would assume Chandelure was Flash Fire and not use fire moves against it, and Flame Body could turn the game if it got hit by Kangaskhan's Scrappy Fake Out or Sucker Punch. Yu Yu kept getting faster in Generation 7, with Latias, Gengar, Terrakion, and Naiho Higo upping the ante, and this meant Chandelure struggled more than ever against offense, given that High Dragon and Mega Aerodactyl were still around. However, the addition of Scizor, who was incredibly good, meant Chandelure at least had newfound defensive use, especially if it used Flame Body as its ability in order to punish Scizor's U turn incredibly hard. Flame Body also brought with it the benefit of brutally punishing pursuit attempts from Crocodile and Mega Aerodactyl. 30% of the time. While this was a nice tool to have, Chandelure's main use was, once again, using its subcom mindset to destroy Stall, which was stronger than ever. It was even more difficult to deal with this time around, because while it liked having leftovers to create more substitutes, it would dominate Blissey and Lomomola either way, and as such, it sometimes made use of the new Z moves, specifically Ghostium Z. Shadow Ball's initial power generally got the job done, given Chandelure's astronomical special attack stat, but it was on 
on another level when Zed up, making it truly terrifying and giving it the one-hit KO potential it sometimes lacks. A calm mind boosted never-ending nightmare could be the difference against a Pokemon that could otherwise take a hit. Most notably, Tentacruel and Suicune on the defensive team Chandelure's purpose was to beat, as well as the boost it wouldn't be obtaining from Calm Mind against unaware Quagsire. The extra power was also highly useful against offensive teams, as it absolutely crushed key targets that otherwise be able to switch in and eat a Shadow Ball, such as Terrakion and Mega Aerodactyl. The extra wallop against Primarina was also incredibly useful. Overall, Chandelure in Gen 7 UU was an improved redux of its role in the previous generation. A bit of a niche pick, since it was just about entirely aimed at crushing stall, but that it did immensely well, and it even had a few nice tricks against offense, namely Flame Body. The addition of Z-moves were a huge improvement, as the boost to Shadow Ball made it even more threatening against both stall and offense. Chandelure's only notable placement in all of Gen 7 was once again via Samuel Harzma, who used it in 2018 on a hard rain team to dispose of the usual threats to the archetype, such as Ferrothorn, Celesteela, and Amoongus. Samuel also ran Ghost DMZ almost as a new pseudo version of the Ghost Gem that Chandelure used to use in Gen 5. But other than that, Chandelure suffered in Gen 7. Sure, there were more fairies around, but Chandelure couldn't really go head to head with most of them, and with the advent of Intimidate, Arcanine and Incineroar's arrival, it was clear who the premier fire types were. Meanwhile, Mimikyu was able to both be a fairy type and a much more reliable trick room setter with its disguise. Chandelure's day has come and gone, and while it saw some usage in 2020, it's by and large far inferior to Mimikyu and Dusclops as a ghost type, and to Incineroar, Arcanine, and Torkoal as a fire type. Chandelure survived Dexit and established a niche for itself in OU in Generation 8. It absolutely loved Pursuit's removal from the game, as now it could happily spam its stabs without fear of being trapped by Tyranitar. However, this was already being abused by OU's three primary ghosts, Dragapult, Aegislash, and Gengar. So what separated Chandelure? Well, those three other ghosts were walled pretty hard by Mandibuzz, who made use of the new Heavy Duty Boots to not be crippled by Stealth Rock. However, Chandelure's secondary fire stab mowed right through it. It also had the strongest Shadow Ball, given its 145 special attack, seeing as Aegislash's special attack stat had been knocked down to base 140 in the generational shift. Given the presence of Clefable, Sylveon, and Corviknight in the tier, Chandelure had plenty of opportunity to come in and start smacking things around. It even packed Psychic for Como-O, who resisted fire and was immune to Shadow Ball thanks to Bulletproof. And although Hydreigon was running around in OU now, Chandelure still hit it really, really hard on the switch with specs moves. So finally, Chandelure had legitimate OU use. However, it wasn't quite an OU staple, and as such found itself in UU, where its spec set was even more menacing. The tier was ill-equipped to handle its stab combination, and the few Pokemon that it managed to stave off, such as Umbreon, Vaporeon, and Incineroar, would be utterly ruined by Trick. Tricking Incineroar was especially nice because it would transfer its heavy-duty boots to Chandelure. This was also useful on Choice Scarf sets, which Chandelure could use to blow by offensive teams. So overall, at the time of this video, Gen 8 UU is still pretty new, but Chandelure looks to be establishing itself as a top tier Pokemon in it, as well as being a legitimate tourney worthy choice in OU for the first time in its career. And that's it, so how good was Chandelure actually? Well, it's perhaps the biggest tease in Pokemon history, with the unfulfilled promise of a Shadow Tiger that would completely destroy the game. Instead, it became a UU lifer. It spent the entirety of Black and White in the tier, only being banned at the very end, then eked out a role as one of the tier's most dangerous stallbreakers in the following two generations. Generation 8 saw it return to UU again, although this time it was more of a well-rounded Pokemon, as opposed to the niche stall killer it had previously been, and even more impressively, it finally made a name for itself in OU. In VGC, it was frequently used in Gen 5 and 6, being an amazing anti-trick room Pokemon, but unfortunately fell off once more counters to it showed up, in addition to more useful fire types. So, Chandelure's had an interesting ride, but overall, it's been quite a good Pokemon. Thanks for watching, everyone, and as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitor Chandelure, how would you feel if it actually finally got at Shadow Tag. How would you change it? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well.
and follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.